Like, I have a lot of respect for her because she went back to school really recently. Oh, what? And she got her diploma and did better than I did in university. Oh my god! So now I can't have any like hard like, Mom, the times have changed. <laughs> yeah. Like, you don't understand. It's hard to do well in school. And I think <laughs> once the leash was let loose and I went to university, all of a sudden I like pursued music so aggressively because yeah. I loved it. And like they weren't around to supervise me at the same time. Yeah. And uh, that's when like chaos broke loose. Mm -hmm. Wait. <laughs> what is this? What? <laughs> I always where, find the where? weirdest things. <laughs> Wait, what is the strangest thing about this? This is Los Angeles. This right is here. so weird. Okay, the sciences to me, uh, especially the, the clinical aspect of it, mm -hmm. is some of the most like, it's the most human sides of uh, of like academia. Dion T, like primary and occasion. Mm -hmm. uh, these guys are oh, all Oh, occasion. Amazing. I saw them in Hong Kong. Oh, you did? Yeah, that was oh. sick. Oh, damn. I'm so jealous. <laughs> Hi, so today I'm here with Robotaki. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> so you were, was it born in Toronto? I was born in Toronto, yeah, that's right. Are your parents from there as well? Um, my parents are, uh, from, my mom's from Hong Kong, my dad's from Jamaica. Wait, I didn't know that your mom's from Hong Kong. Yeah, she is. I'm from Hong Kong. Okay, there you go. So you already got <laughs> something. Hell yeah. <laughs> Do you go there often or? Uh, honestly, I've only been there once and it was like, I think it was over a decade ago, so um, it's been a long time. Yeah. But all I remember there is like being super humid and then... It's gross. It's like it's so disgusting. <laughs> it's very gross. Yeah, but, but, I'm you know, very happy I, to be here. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And where do you say your dad's from? Uh, he's from Jamaica, actually. He's really? Born in Jamaica. He's one of the Chinese Jamaicans there. And uh, yeah, it's like an interesting kind of life story for him. Yeah. He, he, yeah, he, he can break out like the patois every now and then. That's crazy. That's cool. <laughs> what was he doing there? Did his, where is he like originally from? Um, he's, he's straight up Jamaica. He's, I mean, he's Chinese, yeah. but he was born there. And yeah. Has, yeah, so that's uh, his, his uh, specific like Chinese uh, heritage is called Hakka. Oh, okay, Hakka, yeah. yeah. But um, Is there, a, are there a lot of like Chinese people in Jamaica? Like a the thing is, I've never, I've never been myself, so I'm not yeah. too sure. But from what I've been told, there are, and there's like a very tight knit community there. Damn. As well, so. What what made his family move? Do you know? <laughs> I actually don't know. I, really, I should ask <laughs> him about you that. Should be curious. I know, I know. I should, I should ask him about that. My parents are a lot older too, so they're they're a little bit more reserved. Yeah. So they, they keep to themselves, obviously. But yeah. That's definitely a discussion yeah. after. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then they met in Toronto. Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay. That's right. And then... And the rest is history. So. Yeah. <laughs> and what was it like growing up in Toronto? Darn, you're digging deep. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was a huge gamer, like a really big video game geek. Because uh, my brother, like, he'd always play video games and then I would watch at the same time. And that kind of, that got me into that whole universe. Yeah. And, um, like, I was just a super introverted kid who wanted to always stay inside and play video games even yeah. though we were, like, traveling somewhere. I feel so bad about it now. It's like my parents would bring me out to vacations and all I'd want to do is play video games. Damn. But, uh, I mean, were they chill about it? They like, they, I mean, they're I mean, Asian parents. They're chill about it. But they're chill about it in their own way. Yeah. But obviously they wanted to like force me to do stuff that wasn't so freaking lonely. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I mean, that's an interesting segue because video game music was essentially what got me into production in the first place. Yeah. How about like in school, like what subjects were you into? I was studying uh, sciences for the longest time. Oh, so you were all like, were you super into that? Like doing science <laughs> projects and stuff? Like I was, I was into it. Um, and I really, I still really do enjoy health sciences. Yeah. But it's one of those things where if you kind of half-ass it, mm -hmm. then you're not going to be, you're not going to do well as, as well as the people who are just like 100% for yeah. it. Yeah. And like my problem was you know, doing music at the exact same time as university and it's just too hard to juggle that. You only have 24 hours in the day, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's where things kind of led me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What kind of music did your parents play in the house when you were growing up? Oh my goodness. So, um, my mom would always play like a lot of classical music mm -hmm. and she was, got me into the classical um, yeah. music in general. Um, but my dad would always play like Boney M. Oh, and like wow. like ABBA stuff like yeah. the stuff oh, he yeah, was brought was up ABBA. on yeah <laughs> I don't know if that like influenced my my interest nowadays <laughs> the ABBA. but I mean I, I am really into funk music so maybe oh. by, by just derivative yeah like maybe that. yeah but, yeah what kind of careers are they in 
Uh, my dad is a, a GP, so he's a general mm -hmm. a practitioner. Yeah. And um, my mom used to be a, a realtor, but uh, she's no longer that. It obviously, like, had kids, so that was, like, a full-time job yeah. at some point. Um, but I have a lot of respect for her because she went back to school really recently. Oh, wow. And she got her diploma and did better than I did in university. Oh my god. So now I can't have any of that card like, Mom, the times have changed. <laughs> yeah. Like, you don't understand. It's hard to do well in school now. So Damn, I, can't, I can't say that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did she study? Uh, she studied, uh, if I'm, I'm correct, she did women's studies at York University. Yeah. And she got like... I'm gonna butcher this, but it's like magna cum laude. Yeah. Like, like super top of her class. That's crazy. So like, Wait, so everyone else is like a lot younger, and she was like. Yeah, she was wow. one of the elder, elderly students there, so it's just super awesome that she did that. Was that just like out of the blue, or was she always like interested in learning more? I think she was always interested about it, and like her, her passions obviously they must have, you know, been pushed to the side because of having a family. Yeah, and, um, that's really interesting. The fact really that she could finally like do that again is really awesome. So. Yeah. yeah. Did they push you like academically when you were growing up? They did in in like middle school, high school. Yeah. But I think once the leash was let loose and I went to university, all of a sudden I like pursued music so aggressively because yeah. I loved it. And like they weren't around to supervise me at the same time. Yeah. And uh, that's when like chaos broke loose. <laughs> but um, you know they gave me a lot of uh, discipline and uh, yeah, you know a lot of responsibility that I still take to today. Do you think if it wasn't for them, would he still have gone to college? Oh, that's a really interesting question. I, I, I think the idea of college was too strong so that, like, yeah, I still would have gone mm -hmm. if they didn't push me. I went to a, a private school and uh, everything was very, you know, university centric. Right, yeah. And uh, it was like the IB system, so mm -hmm. obviously the next step would be university. So. Yeah. But um, they definitely did influence the type of schools that I was applying to. Mm -hmm. um, they were, I mean, the the, pip, the pedestal ones were like Ivy schools in, in oh, the States. Oh, so you and like, applied to a lot of U.S. schools as well. As well, yeah. So when you first started doing music, did you go through like a band phase or... Wait, what, what is this? What? <laughs> I always where, find the where? weirdest where? things. Wait, what, what is the strangest thing about me? This is Los Angeles. This right is here. so weird. <laughs> I was just um, interviewing Rams like this morning. There was just like... Oh, lots, sweet. Like, Oh, we were in like a Korea town. There were just a bunch of roosters. It was so weird. Like I don't know. I find just, the like, weirdest on the stuff street. on mine. It was just like behind a fence, but then it was like a home. It was just like this, and it was like a bunch of roosters. That's <laughs> so so random. I don't know what I. That's cool. You you uh, you got to see Julian though. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. Still around. I had to do classical music because mm -hmm. like my, my mom like drilled me to do that, um, but. So what I think instrument? I, I I played piano, violin, oh, okay. and flute. The whole, Damn. The, the Asian trifecta in some circles. Did you have like <laughs> lots of lessons? Did you like compete? Yeah, yeah. I went through uh, these a lot of these competitions, like uh, Kiwanis Music Festivals. Yeah. And for piano, there was like a thing called CMC that mm -hmm. I went for at one time. Um, Did you enjoy but, those at all? Oh, it's weird because like I, I think in the moment I absolutely hated it. Yeah. Because I would, I hated stress and like that that idea of competition. Yeah. But it really did help me, like, develop kind of a, a skin against uh, high pressure situations and high right. stress things. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I think it helped a lot. I'm yeah. definitely grateful for like, moving through that. So how did you go from the jump between doing all the piano flute type stuff into the like like producing? Um, it was, I feel like they were kind of mutually exclusive things and then only recently I realized, you know, oh my god, they're not. Mm -hmm. But, uh, it was, I got into music, I think it was around grade 9 or grade 10. Yeah. We had a music program and they, there was a unit where we had to use GarageBand. And, uh, I was like obsessed with being able to just create my own music using mm -hmm. the, the stock loops they had <laughs> but at some point I was like yeah I'm not really making my own music I'm just kind of like putting things together and uh you know I wanted to take that further and that's when I just got my first AW and yeah. just learned things through trial and error. Were people around you producing or were you just like the only one like in the phone the, world? I was really the only one. Damn. Yeah it was an extremely isolating hobby um up until and throughout college actually There'd be so many times where I could have gone out like partying instead, but I instead wanted to stay in my boxers mm -hmm. in front of my, oh my computer. God. So 
Yeah. <laughs> How did you teach yourself? Was it like YouTube tutorials? Or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. The, the YouTube tutorials help so much. Um, I was really involved with like a forum called uh, OC Remix. Mm -hmm. I think it's Overclocked Remix. And uh, it was just like a group of like indie producers doing remixes of video game soundtracks. Yeah. Yeah, and like that kind of taught me the rope. Mm -hmm. It taught me the ropes of uh, producing. Yeah. And uh, it was a really cool community to be involved with. Do you still, are you still in touch with them now? I'm not, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. No, it's been a long time. I think it's been like six years. Oh my god. Was, but <laughs> that's where it all began for me. Mm -hmm. Were you always under like Robotalk or did you have like a different name? I was always under that. Actually, it started there because that was when I was creating my forum name. Yeah. And uh, for some reason it stuck since. Yeah. So, yeah I, haven't, I haven't had the inclination to change, I guess. What was the idea behind it? <laughs> so it's it's kind of embarrassing. I thought it was it's not a really in-depth story, but <laughs> I think around that time I was like really getting into Japanese food, mm -hmm. and uh, I saw Roba Taiyaki mm -hmm. on, a, on a menu. <laughs> and then I think when I was trying to create a form name, I was trying to remember what that was. Oh! But then I just like completely butchered it. Yeah, but and that's good then, because now I mean, it's good for SEO and people can find you. Yeah, that, I mean that's the, that's the one good thing, and I, I keep thinking about this because it could have been a really like it different been, name. Yeah. And it, it could have like had to stick. Like, yeah. what if I was like some down tempo producer or something, and it was, or yeah, you know, like at least Robotaki kind of fits the sound yeah. that I have. So at least it's not like because I was um, interviewing Y2K, mm -hmm. and then. The name Y2K, okay. he was like, for SEO, he was fighting like a world ending disaster, oh, oh so it was God. like really hard for him to do SEO, but it was just really funny. <laughs> and then, so, you went to McGill for like a anatomy and cell biology. That's correct, yeah. And I uh, did that for my undergrad and uh, my master's degree. How did you decide those are like extremely specific <laughs> it, for undergrad? That's the thing, I feel like it's just uh, McGill, it's faculty of science, they have like that, that uh, what do you what do you call it? Like it's anatomy of a oh, department, yeah, mm -hmm. anatomy and cell biology department. But honestly, that's like the least specific sciences department there. Yeah, like you can take such a variety of different science courses. Mm -hmm. That yeah, it, it just sounds very specific, but yeah. it's not really. <laughs> Did it ever occur to you to study music? No, I I think like academically, you mean? Yeah. Like, no, I I didn't really feel feel that was a choice. Then again, there might have been some. Uh, you know, my parents probably wouldn't have wanted me to study music over sciences, mm -hmm. to be honest. So there was definitely a prioritization they, they made yeah. on that part. But, um, I mean, all I've known academically is sciences, essentially. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's crazy. If, it, if you weren't doing music, do you think you'd still have a career in sciences? I... You know, I don't think so. Yeah? I, I don't think so. I mean, I, this is not to like say down the road I'm not going to do something in mm -hmm. sciences because I still really do love it. Mm -hmm. But I know finally that I'm like I love being creative. Yeah. And it's not just music. I just love like the creative process in mm -hmm. general. It's something something really gratifying about the uh, like making something that is that no one else has made before. Yeah. And that that's what gets me excited. So. Is that more of a recent thing that you're realizing that you're more of a creative person? Yeah, yeah, I've definitely come to terms with that more recently. Mm -hmm. It's like within the past year, I'm a lot more comfortable with myself in that regard. Was there any specific thing that like sparked your interest more? Um, <laughs> I I think I've had I've had a lot of help. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the the shuffle shelter tour. Yeah. Was one of the biggest opportunities for me to to show my parents, you know. Mm -hmm that I'm not just sitting in front of my computer making music. Cause that's, all, I understand that's all they really see me do. But to like finally be able to bring them to a show yeah. in Toronto and let them see the whole world that's kind of surrounding this music and how many people love it, myself included. Um, that kind of like switched something in me. Yeah. And it made me be like, you know, okay, they, they finally understand why I do oh, this. Oh, wow. And so now they're like fully supportive. Or yeah, I, like, I, would like to, I would like to yeah. think so, yeah. I hope so if you watch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like about the science, uh, sciences so much? Um, I, okay, the sciences to me, uh, especially the, the clinical aspect of it, mm -hmm. is some of the most like, it's the most human sides of, uh, 
of like academia because yeah. you have to deal with people all the time and you really like, like everyone is born with their health it's something that people have inherently but it's not something that everyone wants to talk about ever mm. the only time someone talks about their health is when something bad happens that's right? true yeah so that's why i think it's a really unique kind of uh it's a unique, unique world where it's really dependent on like the human nature mm -hmm. but then around the whole thing is kind of this cold like science is memorize everything yeah. you know learn each molecule learn each mm -hmm. pathway but uh yeah that's uh, that's what intrigues yeah. me about it at least if you um followed that career path what job would you be in <laughs> um i Ooh, that's really difficult <laughs> i th I would like to think I would go into some sort of uh, practical um, path, so mm -hmm. something like surgical, because I really do love using my hands, yeah. and like kind of like building things with my, with my hands and doing things with my hands. Mm -hmm. But uh, really, it's a tough it's a tough question because there's so <laughs> many paths. Yeah. To go, yeah. And I haven't pursued it yet, so mm -hmm. uh, every a, any sort of decision I would make would be kind of naive on my part right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. And you were just mentioning earlier, but like the first two years of your college, you were like just sitting and then just like doing music and like not yeah. really talking to anyone. Like yeah, what happened? Yeah, like for the first two years, yeah, it's because I was um, I was like really getting into to like doing remixes for K-pop. And oh. that was around the same time. How did you even get like... into that? <laughs> I just I fell in love with the universe of, of K-pop because mm -hmm. it, it was so. There was so much hype, there's so much energy, there's so much yeah. production value. And I hadn't seen anything like that in, in the music industry. And uh, to to see that I could generate a following organically mm -hmm. by doing these bootlegs of remixes got me really excited. So, yeah. So most of it were like Korean fans initially that found yourself yeah. through this? Uh, I would... I, I would say so? Yeah. I, I haven't really looked at the stats or anything or like, maybe I should one day. <laughs> Um, I think so. That had a big yeah. part in, in uh, the, I guess, the, the listener base I mm -hmm. have nowadays. Were there any specific K-pop artists that stood out to you during that time? Yeah, definitely. So I, I love, okay, Big Bang, definitely. Mm -hmm. 21. Uh, Shiny is, like, for some reason, one of my, they're, like, one of my mm -hmm. favorite groups. They're, yeah. Whoever's producing for them and whoever, like... Whoever trains those those guys, yeah. they're doing an amazing job because they're so freaking talented. <laughs> but um, uh, there I've been recently getting into a lot more. I don't even know if it's underground anymore, but there there are guys like Zion T, like Primary and Occasion. Mm -hmm. uh, these guys are oh, all Occasion. Amazing. I saw them in Hong Kong. Oh, you did? Yeah, that was oh, sick. Oh damn, I'm so jealous. <laughs> how, how was that? Was it a show? It was for this Fendi event, and he just did a. Uh, Ichima. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. That the whole uh, industry there is booming for a good reason because there's a lot of talent over there. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I forgot to ask you like earlier on, like what what initial people that you listen to like after a gamer phase. Oh, um, I guess one of the albums that really changed my my perspective on everything was it was probably Cross. Yeah, Justice, Justice oh. Cross. I, I'd never heard anything like that, and it mm -hmm. just made me want to follow every single French producer, especially yeah. like the whole Ed Banger crew. Yeah. Like, those guys really influenced my music. Um, then uh, my sister introduced me to this group called Mm-hmm. and um, they're just like really unique kind of synth-driven producers. And I, I think I even nowadays they, they really drive... The, the sample choices that I make. Yeah. Did, did you find those people yourself or did your friend show you? Uh, no, it was, it was actually my brother and sister. Oh, like, They're okay. the ones who really All showed them. me yeah. this. But it kind of, like, I started to look for stuff on my own after that. Yeah. And, uh, like, from there, I probably went through, like, a really, really strong but short uh, indie electro pop phase. Like, yeah. I was listening to Phoenix and, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> I think it was Urban Outfitters that I heard them first. <laughs> and I was like, this is <laughs> sick. This is a really good band. <laughs> So after the after the two first years of college, how did you like overcome that phase? <laughs> I I really don't know if I even did overcome it. Yeah. Um, I'm still a pretty introverted person. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I just like became really good friends with with uh, people in college through my classes. Yeah. And uh, I think maybe one of the alienating things that happened unintentionally was mm -hmm. since I was taking IB in high school. 
I had a lot of transfer credits. Oh. And because of that, I, I couldn't take the yeah, same classes. Yeah, I did IB also. You're right, yeah. Yeah. And I, like, you just can't take the same classes in first year. So you're already, like, advanced, that's why. <laughs> advanced. <laughs> advanced. I don't, you know, I see what they're going for, and they're just trying to give us, like, a leg up. Yeah. But at the same time, there are a lot of... There are a lot of things that do, that I feel need to happen yeah. in first year that that don't when you yeah. when you don't take the same classes as the people you're going to be with for the mm -hmm. rest of your university life. So, did you talk to your parents throughout that time, or did they know about it? <laughs> oh, I don't. Wow, it's like it's not even that long ago. It's like well, six years is pretty long. I don't think they knew about it yeah. back then. Um, Maybe they did. I, I don't know, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it was just a personal adventure, so I never really shared it with them until... You're, you're making me dig deep. Huh. <laughs> Damn. Darn. <laughs> I'm going to go back home and think about this one. <laughs> How did you get yourself out there after you did the K-pop remixes? I think one of the... It might have been her happening at the same time, mm -hmm. but one of the biggest things that happened was I I was fortunate enough to win a remix contest oh. for, uh, for Kandinsky. Yeah. And it was for uh, for Nightfall. Oh. And, um, like once that happened, I think it put my name a little bit more on on like the bloggers' radar yeah. at least. The fact when blogs were like driving mm -hmm. the, the industry. Yeah. And uh, yeah, from there I got my first manager, and he he got me a lot more. Opportunities. Yeah. yeah. How old were you when you got your first manager? I think I was 18 or 19. So Damn, somewhere that's still there. pretty young. Yeah. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Were you ever afraid of like having a manager or like stuff down the road, like getting scammed? I mean. Uh, I I think I was too naive to have that worry yeah. back then. I was just like too excited to, you know, be doing music. So yeah. th that wasn't really a thought that I had. Mm -hmm. um, definitely now, after like doing music a little bit, I, I have, you know, more. Uh, like I make sure things like that aren't gonna happen anymore. Yeah. But uh, you know, I even now I don't really care about that much, too much. Yeah. I'm just happy to be doing music. So, yeah. Yeah. And after you graduated, um, then you started doing like music full time off the bat. Yeah, that's right. It basically, so, yeah. Off, yeah, just like right after school, the shelter tour happened. Yeah. So. so, oh, you already had like your whole career already started coming up, and then you're just like, <laughs> could support yourself. <laughs> oh, support myself. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a, it's, I'm so new to this whole thing right now, yeah. especially that, um, I, one of the greatest privileges right now is the fact that I don't need to worry too much mm -hmm. about depending on my music to support myself. That's why my parents, like, I love them so much mm -hmm. for doing this. Um, you know, I want to get to a point, though, where yeah. obviously I am going to be able to support myself fully and, uh, like, know that I am supporting myself yeah. off my music. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, like, since this is all happening the last year, everything is kind of just coming together. Yeah. I finally see how this could be a long-term thing. Mm -hmm. How do you think the type of music you've changed since you put out the first songs oh it's uh, <laughs> it's changed a lot um how how has it changed specifically this, this is the thing i my my production process is so weird mm -hmm. that like i really whenever i make something that sounds too like the like a past project yeah i end up just hating it the next oh, day wow. and i know it's like a really self-defeating kind of mentality mm. but um I don't know, maybe that's why the, the past couple of single releases I've had, they've all kind of been from different ends of the, the sphere. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm hoping people can still hear that it is my project, my, my type of music. Mm hmm But um, also at the same time, I just, you know, so be it. If it's going to be really different yeah. between each release, then like, that's what makes me happy. Yeah. And I'm just going to keep doing it. How do you think you've grown personally since you started music? <laughs> yeah, I've... Music has been like one of the most teaching things for me. Uh, I've become a lot more open, mm, yeah. like socially. Uh, I'm not afraid, you know, for to socialize with people anymore. Yeah. To like make friends with people. Um, I've met some of my best friends just because of music, and uh, 
I think that alone has kind of taken me from that like 100% introversion into yeah. like the introverted extrovert. Yeah. Which, which I'm happy about. And last question, what do you want to be remembered for? What do I want to be remembered for? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you should have told me this before the interview started. This is such a loaded question. <laughs> um, you know, I. <laughs> this is kind of a broad like blanket statement, mm -hmm. but I would, I really want people to know that I'm just trying to be like the most respectful, mm -hmm. a really good person to everyone. I, I never like, I never want to do harm to anyone. Yeah. And I just want people to like enjoy what music is at its, at its heart. Yeah. And I want to bring that environment forward. Yeah. And if, if people can feel that, then like I, I feel gratified. Because. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much. <laughs> no problem. Thank you for doing this. Oh, bye. Great.